Good afternoon, or good evening, or good morning, whenever it is that you are viewing this devotional. My name is Kevin Gregory. I have the privilege of serving as the pastor here at Detroit Lakes United Methodist Church. At the moment, we're in the middle of our sanctuary. We're right in front of our big Christmas tree at the front, and we've begun the season of Advent, the season of waiting once again for the birth of the Christ child, for the birth of Jesus, and also waiting and hoping and preparing for the kingdom of God, for when this world becomes like the world that God envisioned this world to be. And we look forward to our working in that world, partnering with Jesus in that work to bring about God's kingdom to people of love, people of grace, people of justice, people who follow where it is this child that will be born is leading. And last year during the Advent season, you might remember that members of our church got together and we wrote devotionals for every day of the Advent season. And many of you all participated in that and it was a fun activity and fun exercise that we get to participate in. And this year for some Advent devotionals, we thought it might be fun for us to kind of record a couple of little short devotionals during the week to kind of give you a little snapshot of what we're thinking about every week as we journey through Advent. And so today, during this first week of Advent, as we've lit the candle of hope, the first Advent candle as the light begins to get brighter, I want to take you back to the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. So maybe an unlikely place to begin our Advent story. At DLUMC, throughout the next four weeks, we're going to be journeying in a sermon series called Back to the Beginning. And we're going to be looking at the very beginning of all four of the Gospels, at Mark and Matthew and John and Luke, and to see what they might be telling us about this Advent season. And the Gospel of Mark begins, maybe not how you would quite expect it. It's beginning in chapter 1, verse 1. Mark just dives right in. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. And John was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made out of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I am is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And about that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While Jesus was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open and the Spirit like a dove coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven, you are my son, whom I dearly love, in you I find happiness. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so you see at the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is already an adult. He's already on the scene. He comes to meet with John the Baptist, who we talk about a lot during this time of year. John the Baptist being one in the Gospels who prepares the way for Jesus, just like we are to prepare the way for Jesus to be born here in this season. And the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is there with John. And Jesus comes to the Jordan River and John baptizes Jesus. And when Jesus is baptized, Jesus sees the heavens open up and God speaks to him and God tells him, this is my son whom I love. In you, I find happiness. Or as other translations put it, in you, I am well pleased. And so this first week of Advent, this week where we're talking about hope, we're reminded of this text. We're reminded of our baptisms, we're reminded that in all of Scripture, 
all of the beginnings, in Genesis, here in Mark, that God looks at God's creation and God sees that it is good. And God looks at you that way. And God says that you are my beloved child. And so this first week of Advent, we remember our baptisms. And as we pour water into the baptismal font that lives here in our sanctuary, we're reminded of the gift of water. Water that is healing, water that is purifying, water that keeps us alive. And we're reminded that God looks at each and every one of us and God says that you are mine, that you are holy, you are valued, that you are sacred, and that you are a beloved child of God. And so I invite you this week to remember and to be thankful for your baptism, to find some water in your life. Maybe we're in the middle of Minnesota, so maybe find some snow, or when you're in the shower, or as you're drinking water in your water bottle throughout the day, and to take a moment and to remember your baptism. And you may not remember it, remember it. You might have been an infant when you were baptized. But to remember God's claim on your life, to remember that God looks at you and says that you are mine, to remember that God values you and cherishes you, to remember that God loves you, and that God loves each and every one of us, and that God loves all of creation, and that in this Advent season, we're reminded of that because once again, God comes to make God's home among us. Remember your baptisms and be thankful. May it be so. Amen.